Hi guys and welcome back to another Edexcel IGCSE Paper 2 Practical Question. Today we're looking at a question, the graphics question from May 2019. So here you can see a model of what we're going to be making. It is a logo for CS Scuba using an existing image that we've edited. When you get this question paper in front of you in your exam, it will be obviously hard copy, it'll be paper in front of you. It's important that you take the time to read through this scenario here. So we've got this scenario in front of us, and it's the Simon is the owner of Celtic Spring Scuba, CS Scuba. The company teaches diving and offers diving trips around the world. We've got the contact details there, website address, etc. And then I've got the house style, that's really important. So we just take the time to have a look at that. All headings are bold and italic and logo in the top left hand corner so everything you do needs to match that house style to gain marks so come to page four and i've linked to this document in the description it's in a dropbox file for you to download it yourself and everything you need to answer this question so section a task a1 simon needs a logo that will be used on some of the company's documents it's an image he wants to be part of the logo but it needs editing so First thing, open a new WordPress document, enter your details in the header. So have something like this. I put my details in the header like that. Create the logo. The logo must be fit for purpose and include image from diver from the images folder. The image should be edited to remove the background. Company name or CS Scuba logo added to it. Now in the folder is this, this is the image that we're going to be editing today. Now, I'm going to do this in two halves. I'm going to start with Adobe Photoshop, and then the second half, which I'll put the timestamps in the description, is going to be creating this image in PowerPoint. Now, start with the Photoshop, and it's probably the preferable, preferable software that you use because it makes it better quality. If we look at one I made earlier here, this one was created in CS, in Photoshop, and this one was created using PowerPoint and you can see the difference it's slightly blurry works get marks for it but there is there is a difference to it now the software I'm using for this is Photoshop CC 2018 but Photoshop CC will all be similar and older versions of Photoshop I know will be similar a similar way of doing this as well so the first thing I'm going to do is open my image that I want to edit and I need to just browse to the file there and it's this one here and there it is this is one I want to edit so things I've got to do to this is I've got to remove the background and I've got to add the text so to remove the background I'm going to simply use the magic wand tool and I'm going to click up here and hold that down press that down until I get my selection here and I need to choose magic wand tool there I'm going to click on the grey area there, and it's really nice and simple. I'm going to go to Edit and Cut. I'm going to do that again there. Click on there again, Edit and Cut. And I've got some grey here, so I need to remove that as well. Edit and Cut. And there's a little bit there as well. Edit and Cut. Then I need to add some text. So I'm going to go here and... I've already chosen the correct size up here. I've typed in, I've chosen mine to be 120, bold and italic. You can choose a font there. And I'm going to type in CS Scuba. I'm going to make sure that that is bold and italic and just move that into the position that I want that in. So nice and simple there. I kept it quite simple. I didn't add any layers. I just simply used the magic wand tool there just to simply remove the background that I didn't want. And when you get a question like this in the exam, it's probably likely to be making a logo. You can simply use something like that to do it with. The next thing I need to do is to finish this off. And what I'm going to do is not save it. I'm going to export it. And I'm going to do quick export as PNG. Now, it tells me to save the logo as CS Scuba Logo. So that's what I'll do. So I've typed in my file name there and then I'm going to click save. And then that is done. The next thing I need to do is insert a copy of the logo into document task A1. So I'll go to my document there. So I need to insert it into my document. So simply I'll just do that again. I go to insert and pictures and I just simply browse to where I saved it there and double click on it. 
and it places it in the document. So back to here, do not print at this stage, two marks. So now we're going to go to part two of the video. We're going to make that same logo, this time using PowerPoint software. So here I'm in PowerPoint and I've opened up a new document and I want to go to layout and I want to make it blank. Now I need to get my logo onto the page. So I need to browse to that file. So here you can see I've placed the image onto the page in PowerPoint. And what I want to do is get rid of this gray background and add myself some text. So let's go to pitch format here and remove background. Now I need to mark the areas to keep because you see if it's not the correct color there, it's not going to keep it. So I need to just simply go through that and click on the areas I want to keep. I want to keep his hand there. And also I need to mark the areas to remove. So I don't, I don't want this gray area here. Probably don't want this little fiddly gray area here. I don't want that. I don't want this here. I don't want that there as well. And just finally just get rid of this little bit there. Okay, I'm happy with that and I click keep changes. Now I need to add some text. So I'm going to use word art for this. Um, I'm going to type in name of the company, CS Scuba there. And maybe I'll make that a bit bigger and make that bold and italic. So I go up to 120 and try that out and just pop that there now i'm nearly done with this but i'm done with the editing but what i need to do is save it as an image what i want to do is i need to group the whole lot together because they're not grouped at the moment so i'm going to highlight that all like that i'm going to right click and i'm going to go to group and group i'm going to group the image together so i get the writing in there as well then i'm going to right click click again and I'm going to go to save as picture and I'm going to browse to the correct folder that I need to save it in that is really important that you save it in the correct place you're told to in the exam and I'm going to save it as the correct file name which was CS Scuba logo okay and here it defaults to PNG I would choose PNG as well unless you're given a specific file name there you can choose different ones there like JPEG or TIFF, etc., or even SVG, vector format. And then I click save there. And here you can see I've inserted it into my Word document. Now, I'll also link to another video where I've shown how to create a logo using PowerPoint. It's perfectly doable. You can save it as a picture. Just the thing that I said earlier is you do have some trade-off there with quality. But if we think maybe if we shrink that down a bit, that's probably the actual size it's going to be on most documents. It's not really that noticeable. So it's perfectly possible to create a logo in PowerPoint as well. So I've shown you how to create the logo in two types of software, neither of which is particularly preferable. Obviously, Photoshop has the edge over the quality there. PowerPoint, everyone's used powerpoint you can use powerpoint most people you should have powerpoint as your software so if you haven't got photoshop i'd recommend you use powerpoint i'll probably steer, steer clear from something like paint it might make it too complicated you can create quite a decent logo in powerpoint and again I'm, I'm linking to a video where i've shown previously how to do that so now let's look at the second part of the question a1b A1B, explain one drawback of using a bitmap image for a logo. So this is a two mark question. What you're looking at here is particularly this. Now, if we look at this image, this is an image that has been zoomed right in. And what we can see here is something called the pixels. These are pixels. These are small addressable blocks of color. These are called pixels. And I can actually see them when I've zoomed in. And I've got something here called staircasing. So looks slightly blurry doesn't it you wouldn't call that a particularly good quality image when i'm zoomed in and this is the problem of using bitmaps this is the answer to the question here so one drawback of using a bitmap image for a logo you've got to think about where logos are going to be used they're going to be used on small documents they're also going to be used on 
very large things like billboards, for example, websites where they might get enlarged. And if they get enlarged, if they're a bitmap, they're going to lose that quality. They're going to going to look like this. They're going to start getting pixelated, going to look blurry, not going to look very good. So that is the answer to the question there. Marks. A1B. Bitmaps are not suitable for logos because when enlarged they become pixelated, which is where the pixels become visible when zoomed in or enlarged. So I'll just explain what that means, pixelated. This is unlike vector-based images, which do not because they aren't made of pixels. Vector images are made of lines and coordinates, and when you simply enlarge them, you're just enlarging the numbers. So they do not pixelate like bitmaps. Now that completes A1, and yes, it's only worth four marks, but it's a really important four marks. Every mark is important, and you're going to be using this logo on every single document you create. So it's important to get this right. It's quite nice having this at the start. I don't think that's a particularly difficult question, and it's a nice sort of warm-up for the questions to come. Thank you very much for watching. Please see the link to the files in the descriptions below. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.